This is Banksy's devolved parliament. It's a satirical depiction of the UK's House of Commons, with politicians replaced by chimpanzees. Chimpanzee males have that same intimidation behaviour that you see in humans. You'll see them getting very, very agitated. Here we are, in the natural habitat of that most complex and dangerous of species, Homo politicus. The behaviours exhibited by these political animals do have much in common with some of our closest ape relatives. Like chimps, male politicians, and it is mostly males, will often use outright aggression to dominate weaker rivals. That could be a domineering handshake, a slap to the face, an overbearing I'm sorry to hug. Say we... I'm so sorry. Or even a full blown oh, fist. Oh, oh, oh. Often these interactions are intended more to intimidate than to injure. A male will show off his physical strength by puffing out his chest. Chimps do the same, with aggressive physical displays intended to make contenders think twice about taking a shot at the crown. Yeah, the bipedal swagger is a very typical intimidation behaviour of chimpanzees, is that they walk on two legs. They put their arms out so they look bigger. The humans do the same. We call it the gunslinger walk, like a cowboy, you know. It's a way of looking bigger than you are and, and intimidating and showing that you are not afraid. But in both species, the loudest and brashest do not always come out on top. Just as with chimps, human politicians rarely succeed by intimidation alone. They must build alliances and coalitions of supporters. Chimpanzees are political because their hierarchy is not based on, on individual abilities. Like if you take a pecking order among chickens, the biggest and meanest chicken is going to be the dominant. In chimpanzees, it's decided by coalitions. So in order for um, a male to be dominant, he needs to have friends who support him and females who support him. And uh, as a result, sometimes the smallest male can be the alpha male because he has the best connections. Big beasts are um, men and women in the party who have a large following. And really, the sensible prime ministers put these big beasts in the cabinet because it's safer to have them around you and to be trying to thrash out agreements with them in the room. One thing that unites the two species is that once authority begins to ebb away, the tide can turn against the leader very quickly. In chimpanzees, that can have painful or even lethal results for a dominant male. Some of these, these bullies, they end very badly. They get killed by the group or they get expelled and they get ostracized by the group. For a human politician, political assassination can be equally swift, but usually means nothing more than injured pride. But as we've seen uh, at Westminster, uh, the herd instinct is powerful. When the herd moves, it moves. Nobody goes into politics now without the knowledge that they are going to be attacked. And I think the most painful forms of attack are from the public, particularly from your constituents, but also from your own party. I thank everybody here and hasta la vista, baby, thank you. <laughs>